Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with Paula Howell, our educational counselor from Howell Academics based out of Vancouver. She's joining us live today more to talk about all she's doing to help families and children get into those schools and with her education degrees. She has so much experience to help you all and to really help um, our children basically on their educational journey is what it comes down to. So first and foremost, welcome back. Uh, How are you doing today? Uh, good, good. It, it's like I was saying, uh, it's Vancouver right now is a little bit gray today, but yeah. that doesn't change the mode. I am still just as pumped to kind of get into our podcast. Like I said, I find it as my Thursday morning coffee time with you. Yeah, it's so sweet. And she cares about my vacation. We've been chatting <laughs> off air. You are so kind. Thank you so much. Yeah, the kids and I just got back from Turks and Caicos. We had a great time. And it gives you that sense of, um, you know, rejuvenation. It feels good for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely sitting at Envy over here, but then glad that uh, you know we had a few seconds to talk briefly before we went live that the the idea of doing their work in a tropical paradise you managed to kind of do with success so I'm giving you lots of credit for that because um, you know thinking about our topic today about the idea of mindset and how we foster that uh, really segues into what um, I wanted to talk about today yeah well let's begin first and foremost how do we contact you Uh, You can contact me through uh, Paula Howell at howellacademics.com or you can call me direct on 778-628-0204 or also our website www.howellacademics.com. Awesome. And now you're probably feeling overwhelmed out there. This is admissions time, right? It's busy? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's very busy. And and with that busyness comes with also just the kind of idea of how do we move through life's busyness, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. We focus on that. And what I wanted to talk about today was the idea of how we view success and how we measure success and the different levels of that. Uh, There's a a study, I guess, that has uh, been kind of popularized, and I've been reading a little bit more about it. And it's from the psychologist uh, Carol Dweck. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Never heard of her Um, till today. I want to hear. I'm not formally myself either, so uh, but I've been doing a lot of research on the idea of the growth mindset. And I guess the focus is is about how children view setbacks and those as opportunities for growth and fostering resilience. But I can tell you as an adult, as I'm driving into work today, and I was thinking about this whole growth mindset, and I was focusing on wanting to know how your trip went and how your success went with your kids. (laughs) I'll give you a little bit of a story. So last night, I was it, was it last night? Last night, uh, coming home, it was a full on day at work, full on day. And uh, I had two needs. The only need was to ensure that my daughter, who used up all her allowance to buy this Barbie Mecca pack on Marketplace, which is like a Facebook store, Mm -hmm. uh, which was an abundant amount of things, uh, that she finishes playing with that by 730. She has a bath. We read a beautiful, delightful story. And she's in bed by 830 was my goal. No, that didn't happen. It was everything but that. (laughs) Then um, the delivery after her gymnastics, the grocery delivery people were two hours late. Uh, Dinner was later than expected and uh, needing to get back to my virtual assistant. There were so many things that happened that by the time we actually got to bed and I actually got her down to sleep, it was closer to like a 945 around that time. And I'm exhausted. Then this morning, no wake up. It was very difficult for her to wake up. She was Uh, tired, not wanting to wake up. We Barely got to school um, at 8.15, which is 15 minutes past the 8 o'clock time. Um, And all I did when I drove to work as the sun was slowly rising was just saying to myself, I know I'm on point. (laughs) I know I did. I wanted to wake up and do my workout this morning. I wanted to do my meditative cleanse and clearing. I wanted to be able to, you know, I had it all written out to land each of those aspects perfectly. And my growth mindset was at the bottom. I was thinking to myself, as an individual, as an adult, if I were independent, I would be striving at this. But as an adult who is a parent, and now focusing on doing this part myself, I am finding that it's very difficult to foster the idea of a growth mindset. So it brought me full circle back. If I, as an adult, with all of my experiences, still find it difficult with a growth mindset. How do we 
how do we kind of prove to our children that a growth mindset is is possible? So that was my question today ah. because it took a lot for me to get out of that frame. So I'm curious your thoughts on that. Well, growth mindset. Well, first of all, kids <laughs> getting the kids to bed is like, oh my god! You said eight forty five. 8.45 was my, yeah, we was got my to goal. But yeah. at 10.45 last night, I know how <laughs> it is. But it's it's little stages, right? We have this parents, we got to try our best every night, but we also know we're going to be defeated and we're going to have some letdowns. But it, nothing's perfect. So I feel like, and you're a single parent too, right? Yes, yes. So yeah, so. You're, yeah. So you're all alone. I'm like in the bed. We still sleep together. Okay, that's probably wrong, but we do. We've been sleeping together yeah, since birth. Yeah. So the three of us, and it's always a disaster to get them to bed because I want to stay up and watch TV, but then I can't. So then I drag them yes. into watching TV in my bed, and now I'm just rambling. What was I saying? I forgot. No, growth. you're saying you're saying exactly what we're talking about. Just the idea growth of like, how, <laughs> how do we balance that growth mindset? Because. I, yeah, two nights ago, I was in the same position as you. And I was saying, hey, just get in bed with me. We'll just sleep together. I have a king size bed. And you would think that king size bed, she would stay on her side. But it was like diagonal, across, slapping in the head. It was all these That's different things. And my sleep was like five seconds. Yeah, right? yeah. So that didn't work. Um, <laughs> so it, it was discussing the idea, how do we as parents who know all of these skills, who know that our failures and our triumphs, we've had experience with that. How do we, how do you balance that idea of fostering that in your children when their lens is so short? Paige is like eight years old, right? Yeah. Um, and she's witnessing maybe my unsettledness with not being able to get her to bed and seeing my, my own stress, guilt. my anxiety, then I start to yell like I do, guilty. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about it? Do you I think- don't think it's good for them. But I also mm-hmm. feel like it makes my little one has like anxiety like me. I, he's like a, a spitting image of me now. Like everything he says and Ooh. does. And I'm like, <gasps> he yelled at his <laughs> friends. He yelled at his friends the other day on the iPad, on the Snapchat to the neighbors. And he sent like a voice text because he doesn't spell that well yet. He's like, outside now. And, I, it, yeah. Outside, yeah. Now. and I'm like, when did you? I'm like, that's me every night. Get in the bath yeah. now because they don't listen yeah. now. So now he's got this angry yeah. now. And I'm like, oh, I created this. I'm like, where did that come from? And where does that make you feel? Because I know from myself, I hear exactly what you're saying, right? Like as an adult, we have so much to balance as being parents and we don't get that map or that kind of framework of, you know, there's lots of resources that are out there, but at the same token, our children are our children and they are, they are going to kind of uh, move forward from what we, what we share as their, as their mirror. And, and I do, I do feel that guilt. I feel that responsibility when I react yeah. and wanting to try to teach her not to react. But at that same experience, when I think back um, about my idea of what a growth mindset was, I don't even remember it ever being called that, but it was more an idea. Of there was either you fail or you don't fail. That was it. And there was not really an in-between. I was listening to a recent um, motivational kind of from Mind, Mind Valley, I think it's called. And they were saying, if you're giving 99%, you're not, you're not a success. In order to be a success, you have, you have to give 100%. And I was thinking to myself, those messages that we hear, that if you're only making 99, you're not doing the full thing. And that mm-hmm. you have to give 100% all the time. Well, 100% is everything. And that's not possible all the time. So it kind of, for me, feels like it contradicts that growth mindset that as most of psychologists are in their 40s, 50s, Mm -hmm. 60s, who come from an era similar to you and I, who weren't raised on the concept of growth mindset, are we only really reaffirming for ourselves that we have that resilience but the concept of growth mindset is unrealistic. Like, wow, that's, that's so deep, Paula. Yeah, that is. That's what I'm wondering. Like, I'm wondering. I like the concept. It's wonderful. Interesting. But they're all psychologists that are the same age of us who have gone through similar experiences of child rearing of growing up. So is this just what we wish our parents did and we're trying to now do it to our kids, but it's unrealistic? Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> You really have something right? here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. So are we in the effort of kind of wanting to teach a growth mindset and having our moments of reaction? Are we actually being creating the opposite? Because I'm at the point where I just like last night, I just said to my daughter, I said, look, you know, it was quarter to quarter to 10 
And I had planned to read her a story at 8.30, max. Mm-hmm. I had the book, I had everything there ready. But as I grabbed the book that was left on my table that was now in her room, I noticed my other cell phone was hidden in page 12. <laughs> and I said to her, so you had intended uh, intended that mommy wasn't going to read it and that uh-huh. you were going to buy the phone and sneak and watch YouTube. And I thought to myself, okay, Paula, let's have a growth mindset and let's just not get angry about the fact and say, sure, let's read, but I'm exhausted, right? And I start reading the book. I can't see, didn't have my glasses with me. It's dark. And then I just said, no, I, I'm too tired to read. Like, I'm too tired right now to read. Like, mommy asked you to be in bed and to get ready two hours ago. And mm-hmm. I was really keen to want to read with you. But now I'm exhausted and I need to care for myself so that I can be a better mom in the morning. And there was like, okay, sure, don't read me a story. And it was this feeling of like, am I disappointing her? Where am I sitting? But I wanted and needed to care for myself. And I feel that that importance of letting her know the real picture yeah. is a more important lens than saying, oh, I failed at this, let me read you the story. Or maybe I didn't set it up properly and look at, you know, maybe I should have been more firm during mm-hmm. bedtime parts, but I was not responsible for the grocery store guy arriving late. Right? Yeah. I wasn't responsible for the fact that, um, you know, she was maybe more into watching the iPad where we've never done that at home because, you know, there's, there's different influences in her life that um, allow her to do things that I would not govern, that I had never introduced. So when we're looking at all of these parts of responsibility, what part does outside players pay, play in our process of growth mindset? You know, like what part do outside players, because You were saying, okay, yeah, I was saying, oh, I I got mad and I got angry. But when you look back at the idea of what angered you or what frustrated you, because I really don't think it's anger, it's reactive, but it's like a frustration, right? Because Mm -hmm. we want different. What was, what led up to that frustration that your son chose to just see the end result? But did we explain the pieces leading up? Yeah. Did we allow space for that? Yeah, which I, Mm -hmm. I don't. I just feel so guilty as a be feel guilty all the time as a parent, right? Mm-hmm. Guilt. Because we're told, we're told, I believe like our messaging is, is that mm-hmm. if we're too real with our kids, at least at myself and my child rearing and my, you know, you respect your elder, your parents, that if I'm too real with my daughter and I tell her, you know, yeah, the grocery store came late and X, Y, and Z, that means that we just don't have the time and we won't get a good rest, that I'm being too transparent. I'm treating her more as my equal, not my child. I'm uh, not no. boundaries, right? There's just no book and everyone could say something different. What's best, what's not, what you should do, what you should not do, but right? Mm-hmm. Boy, it's difficult. No one ever told me it'd be this difficult. <laughs> no, no one did tell me that. And, and I think the part that I question the most. And, and I, I believe there, you know, there is kind of, there is a message in today's thought and it was, and I was trying to find it because it took a bit. It took while I sat in traffic and tried to figure out, do I listen to motivational? Do I listen to Zen music? Do I count backwards? Like, what do I do? Um, I, I realized that ultimately it comes back again to owning our truth, owning our idea of what, that we are human still as parents, right? That yeah. we are, still learning, still growing, still evolving. But in that, where I look at the gap is, is that I was, I never felt, I always looked up at my, up to my mother as kind of um, my compass or lens, but I wouldn't say that I really knew who she was or what she felt, right? I just had a standard that Mm -hmm. I had to do well. And uh, so when I think about that and I think about, that's what I had as my mirror. And then I look back at how much I've done in my life. I still find that my child sense of looking up to my mother is always okay. where I go when I try to reflect. Yeah. And I don't go to my own thoughts. So I'm wondering, and I'm posing that in all of my kind of ramble Ironic. here. Yes. Oh, what would happen? My mother. Think, yeah. What would happen, do you think, if we if we posed it on our own thoughts, like if we just, if we just looked at psychologists and experts and people as, as resources, but not 
the be all be all sort of guru. And we focus just on what intrinsically we felt was the right thing to say and do. I think that's what we should be doing. We need to do more of that, I think. Hmm. But what would that sound like for you? But then it contradicts. <laughs> I know. I, know. Right? I don't know. Thing. So I mean, would you, here's my question then. So would you, if you were just thinking about you, would you have still done homework on the trip? Just you. If I was thinking just for my own? Yeah, yes. I, I would. Okay. Tell me why. Because I feel like it's a good disciplinary measure. Like we're having a treat, like having candy before dinner because we're on a vacation. We should be in school. So I I feel like that, you know, my parents never would have done that. They would have not even cared and done whatever. But I feel like I'm that, I wish my parents would have made me do the work. I, I don't know. I feel like I need, I like that accountability. So yeah, I would, I would do it. And then would you change your, would you change your, um, messaging to your children about it? Like what, like the way that you presented the topic and idea, would you change your way of doing that? Well, what do you mean how I presented it to them? What? Yeah. So if you look at how you presented it and how you organize the process of doing their homework on the trip, would you have kept it the same way? Well, I was kind of probably nasty about it. You're going on vacation. You got to do your homework. I would have been, should have been like, hey, you know, we're on this fun trip and, but you know, we still have to do the homework and more calm. I'm a little too anxious and I get like, yeah. So I would have changed. What do you, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What do you think caused that anxiousness? Because that's what I'm curious about. Because I know the anxiousness of them doing homework on a vacation is not going to be easy. So I, I it already like showed in my face instead of like, hey, this is cool. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we have to do a homework because you know, you're not going to want to do it type of, yeah, yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's like that middle part <laughs> is where I'm so curious because I know equally that my anxiousness comes from the knowledge of knowing that she's going to push back. Yeah. Right. And that they're not understanding our prior message, which was what? Oh, that's a fire alarm at the office. Oh, gosh. That um, it's just a drill that the that's only going to go for a few seconds. Almost like life um, that. Uh, can you still hear me over it? It's almost yep. like life's mm-hmm. alarm. Is that that same idea and concept? How do we stop the alarm from going off kind of thing? And that part is that gray area that I think psychologists are constantly trying to find the answer to. Yep. I think Mm -hmm. we are today. I wonder if we can figure that out. If we could, we'd be geniuses. We'd be. (coughs) I know. We'd be be kind of like, we'd be kind of on the focus of uh, being able to kind of uh, break the code, so to speak. I was looking at, um, uh, that's only going to go for a few seconds, but it was talking about the idea of, with raising concerns about mental health in children and adolescents, uh, that they're looking at the approach of social emotional learning. So looking at how we integrate social emotional learning in terms of communication Mm -hmm. and children development. And I think that circles back to that same idea, the idea of how are our children learning how to communicate to us versus just being like, no. Yeah. But when we look at the brain, they feel that children in research, that children don't have the ability to formally comprehend all concept of emotional regulation at the level we're asking them to do at the ages they are, right? So are we regulate, are we asking ourselves to regulate more? So should the theory be more around how we regulate ourselves, right? Yeah. And then when I think about our teachers, our our teachers that teach our children that have impact over them over eight hours a day, six to eight hours a day, they too then are responsible for that process so that it leans better in for us. Mm-hmm. So how do we measure that? Gosh, then I wish right? I could change the teacher. I can't change everything. Yeah. I got to deal with yeah. the ones. My son was so upset. We got the mean teacher. We got the mean teacher. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So I, like, does the mean teacher know that she's like labeled a mean teacher? Like I just, as a parent, want to tell her like, do you know, like everyone's upset because they say you're the mean teacher? Like, do they know? Is that rude? But I want them to like, would that change yeah. your perspective on being a nicer teacher? Because she's labeled as the bad, like, or, or I'd become across the route as the woman that she hates forever because I told her she's the mean teacher, but at least I'm the one who had the, enough nerve to tell her. That's mm. on my mind. Well, you're interesting that question because my daughter also got the more assertive teacher, so to speak. And everybody was like saying she got the more assertive teacher. But I noticed that her work ethic is better now. 
Okay. And what's interesting to me is that in all our experiences and all my experiences with her and outside people, she seems to respond better to more of that dictatorship mindset. Like there's no gray in between. Ah. Yes and no. And I feel like when I know the knowledge that that lends to people pleasing in the future, I'm trying to unwrap that and unwind that, but I get a lot of pushback. So it's such a weird position to be in. Mm -hmm. I also want the ease of her to listen like she does to those who dictate. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to go off in one minute, the alarm. It's not distracting too much. Okay, and we're out of time in a minute. Anyway, my gosh, so sorry. So I think what we can do is we can use the alarm as as kind of a tone to say, Kind of keep it at your radar for something that we can continue the dialogue. Yeah. And I'll do some more research along it to look at how we can foster or think about some strategies mm-hmm. for those frustrations. So that next time we speak, the alarm will be off yeah. <laughs> and we can look from a more kind of centered approach of how do we how do we guide our own reactive behaviors? Uh, yeah to balance these elements of of emotion. So how do we do that so that we are allowing ourselves to come to the table a little bit more aware of how our past experiences have conditioned how we parent? Mm-hmm. Well, I apologize. We're out of time, but this is That's okay. this is deep conversation. I love it, and I wow. Again, th- we're, we were talking about success in children today, right? <laughs> and we got to. Yes. We'll talk more about it next time. Thank you so much. Uh, how do we contact yeah. you, Paula? So we contact outside of the bells and whistles here. It's Paula Howell at howellacademics.com or www.howellacademics. Dot com or 778-628-0204. And thank you for your patience with the alarm. Um, no but I problem. think it's surprised that life sometimes hits some alarms. It's so, so we'll do- Oh, that you're so that good. Week. Look at you using the puns. I love it. Thank you so much. You have a great day. <laughs> okay, and we'll talk too. soon. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. Is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council.